today. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa ala rasulillah. The first thing we're supposed to do today, when I get to it, is the next point the Sheikh bring in a book. Al Quran Mu'jiza to Muhammad. That the Quran is the miracle of Muhammad. Okay? Now let's qualify that Mu'jiza, miracle. We always translate it. The Arabic word is Mu'jiza. It's from the word ajaza, which means to be weak. Like we call an old woman ajuz from the word ajaza. He a ajuz. She's old. Or I can say to you in Arabic, and ajaz. I'm weak. I can't do it, Achi. I'm too weak right now. Right? Then if we put it in an Arabic form called F ala yufailu. It means to make someone else become weak And incapable You're weakening somebody else from being able to do something The word miracle Mu'jiza Comes from this And what, why? We translate it to mean miracle What it literally means The prophets are given Mu'jiza The ability to make Weak Capabilities that other people cannot do is, in cap is out of their capability And Allah grants them the ability For them to do that As a sign of their prophecy And so that they will be followed and believed By those people And every nation Prophet Had different situations Musa was his staff His hand turning white Right What other miracle he had Anybody know? Well, that was connected to the staff. Okay? But this was his miracle. Why was that his miracle? Because during his time, magic became prolific. They perfected practice of magic. So Allah gave him an ability that will weaken their magic. Okay? It will your jizu. You get it now? It's more jizu. Isa ibn Maryam, his mu'jiza, his ability to weaken his opponents was akimaha. He will cause the one who was blind to see. Right? And he caused abarasa. Yubari'ul abarasa. He will cause the one who was a leper to be healed. That disease, somebody got leprosy, you got to stay far away from that person. It's very contagious, they say. Right? He will cure them. Yuhi al mawta. He will cause life to the dead. Bi idhnillah. By the permission of Allah, right? And he would inform the people of what they had saved in their homes. Oh, you had this in your house and that in your house. Because that, because medicine became prolific during his time. So Allah gave him an ability that no medicine can do. Heal the leopard, heal the blind, bring the dead back to life. Or as Allah Ta'ala says he would do, he would take dirt and formulate it into a bird and give life to it. No, no medicine could do that. That was his miracle. The prophet had miracles too. Other than, but his greatest miracle was the Quran. Why? Why was that given to him in that way? Because what became prolific during the time of the Prophet, before the advent of Islam, the people became, they perfected speech and eloquency. They used to hang their poems on, you know, that spout that stick out on the Kaaba? If y'all look at the Kaaba, it's a sting, like it look like a spout that sticks out. They would hang their, whoever won in a poetry contest, they would hang their poetry on that in the Kaaba. So Allah gave him a mu'jiza that yu'jizu kullu shi'r. That he was given a speech that was better, that weakened any poetry, could not touch it whatsoever. To this day, can't nobody produce an Arabic speech like that. 
And the shorter, shorter, shorter in the Quran is three ayats. They have not been able to produce three ayats that will outdo it to this day. Three eloquent poems to this day. So the first miracle of the Prophet, his greatest miracle was the Quran. And that's what the Shaykh covers. He says, He said, All of the miracles of the Prophets who came before, previous Prophets, were miracles that were tangible miracles. That was suitable to the time, was the man and the era in which they were sent in. And he goes into what I already said about Musa with the stick in his hand and Isa, what I said, causing life to the dead and so on and so forth. And what I, uh, informing people what they, the, what they had, the, the, what they do in secrecy in their home and like this. He says, all of their miracles, what weaken any arguments that was prolific at that time. So the people can believe in their prophecies and their messengerships, right? Well, Lakin, the Sheikh says, but the messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ragma anhu utiya mujizat hisiya. In spite of the fact he was given tangible miracles, water shooting from his hands, crowds coming down, giving him shade, even before he was the prophet, right? Many miracles. He would use the bathroom. Tangible miracles I'm talking about now. If he would sometimes go to the bathroom, leaves, if he, if he couldn't go nowhere and, and go far away from the people, leaves would just, or plantations in the dirt would just come his direction and cover him while he squatted to use the bathroom. These are some of the miracles of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Spit in the eye of Ali. He, he, he got a disease in his eye. In his, one of his eyes. He couldn't see out of it. And the prophet went to give him a banner to hold the banner in the battle. And he said, he told the prophet, you know, he had affection in his eye. So the prophet spit in his eye. And Ali said he saw better in that eye than he saw in the eye that wasn't infected. So the prophet had miracles, tangible, like the other prophets. But, the sheikh says, in spite of the fact he had tangible miracles, Aida also, illa except the fact, and the mu'jizatahu al-khalid al-baqiyah, his everlasting, ongoing miracle, Kanat al Quran al Kareem was the noble Quran. So, what we benefit from this? Allah made this his greatest miracle. There's no speech more eloquent. There's no speech that reaches the heart and the emotions of man like the Book of Allah. But that's the one who got Iman and the one who's striving with the Quran. This is what is meant by people will die and not taste the best of this dunya, which is knowing Allah, which is through his book. When you understand that book and you're reciting it in the middle of the night or in your prayers and you're thinking about what it means, it does something to you, man. You realize, yes, see, this is one thing that ulama have mentioned, and this is why it's so important to study your aqidah. I was reading the um, Imam al book, of the oldest book of Aqidah, one of the oldest books. But he conglomerated many Aqidahs of the Salaf in that book. It's in five volumes. He said, he deals with the issue of saying the Quran was created and, and saying the, the, the shirk of the Haras Kufa and the obligation of saying the Quran is the speech of Allah is not created. No other human being's speech is like Allah's speech. And this is indicative for us in our salah. You only can recite in the salah what's been legislated and the Quran. Right? If I say any other speech, you nullify your prayer while you're praying. Right? If I'm in a prayer, Alhamdulillah, Assalamu alaikum, Akhi, what's going on? How you feeling, man? MashaAllah. How's the family? Oh, I'm going to Ar-Rahman. My prayer null and void, right? But it don't do that if you recite the Quran. Because it ain't nobody's speech but Allah's. And when you develop this relationship with Allah through reciting it and knowing what it means of what just what you know. I ain't saying you got to be hop, Just what you know. 
You know what it means. And you don't studied it and studied it till you don't even got to think about it no more. Because think about it for a minute. If I say to you what mashallah mean, you're going to tell me. What inshallah mean? You can tell me without thinking about it. And you use it without thinking. Imagine what happens to the vocabulary of the Quran that you've memorized, that you reviewed, you wrote it down word for word, meaning you looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and looked at it. And you recite it and you say it out loud in your prayers. After a while, you don't need to know what it means. Now imagine what that speech is going to do when you're reciting and reflecting it over it. This is important. Because that Quran has been formulated by Allah in a way to deal with your problems. But it can't do it if you're not living it. So when the Sheikh says here, this is the greatest everlasting miracle so that we can use it for these reasons. Prophet dead. But that book's still here. And its capability still able. Still here. And so he quotes a hadith. ما من نبي من الأنبياء إلا أعطي من الآيات ما مثله آمن عليه بشر. There is not a prophet of the prophets that has come, except that he was given verses to the likes of that which man, the people, the mankind can believe upon it. وإنما كان الذي أوتيته he says, and the thing that I have been given is only وحيا is revelation. In which Allah has revealed it and inspired it to me. And I hope that I will be the, with the greatest follower, with the most followers on that day. Al Hadith. This miracle, he says, challenges mankind. It presents a challenge, an everlasting challenge to mankind. ما إن نزلت آية آيات القرآن على رسول الله حتى تحدى الله تعالى به الإنس والجن فقال تعالى في سورة الإسراء he said there was not a verses that was revealed of the Quran upon the messenger of Allah except it got to the point that Allah challenged with that Quran mankind and jinn so he the exalted said to them in سورة الإسراء the night journey سورة chapter called the night journey قُلْ لَئِنْ لَئِنْ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنْسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِيرًا Allah says, say to them, Muhammad, that if jinn, mankind and jinnkind were to come together collectively, to support one another, to bring forth, for them to bring forth the likes of this Qur'an, they will not be able to bring the likes of it, even if they were helpers of one another. Verse 88. And then Allah Ta'ala, that was a general challenge. Then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala challenged the Quraysh specifically, and the Arabs in general. He challenged them, and this challenge, yet the bumman, it was inclusive to them bringing just the likes of the Quran. When Allah Taala says in Surah Tawr, verse number thirty-four, He says, "Faliyat to bi hadith and mithlihi in kano sadiqin." Then let them bring forth a speech like it, if they are truthful. Or Allah Taala says in Surah Al Qasas, verse forty-nine. قُلْ فَأْتُوا بِكِتَابٍ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ هُوَ أَهْدَى مِنْهُمَا أَتَّبِعْهُ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Allah Ta'ala says, say to them, come forth with a book from near Allah that is more guiding than them. So I can follow it if you are truthful. Allah told the Prophet to say that. So that was these, these, what he's telling us now was the, the challenge got more challenging from Allah to the, to, the, to the people, to his creation. That was one stage. He says, then the challenge, Allah made it a partial challenge to bring just 10 verse, 10 chapters of the Quran 
something that's equal to at least 10 chapters of the Quran. Allah says in Surah Al Hud, Am yakulun aftarahu. Or they're saying that he invented it, meaning the Quran. Qul fa'tu bi ashrin suwarin mithli. Then say to them, come bring forth 10 chapters like it. Muftarayat. That's been invented like it. Wad'u man istata'tum min dunillah. And call on whoever you want to the best of your ability less than Allah. In kuntum sadiqeen. If you're truthful. Fa illam yastajibu lakum. And if they do not respond to you, فَعْلَمُوا Then know, meaning you believers, then know أَنَّمَا أُنزِلَ بِعِلْمِ اللَّهِ That it has only been revealed by the knowledge of Allah. وَأَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوْ And that there is no deity worthy of worship except Him. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Are you true submitters to Allah? Then... The challenge went more tense than that. Allah challenged them to bring one sort of like that Quran. And we're going to say the smallest sort of. Just bring something like that. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 23 and 24. In Surah Al-Baqarah, and if you are in doubt about that which we have revealed upon our slave, then come with a chapter like it and call on your witnesses less than Allah if you are truthful. تفعلوا, and if you don't do it, تفعلوا, you, you will never be able to do it. النار, then fear and avoid the fire. In which is fueled by mankind in stone. And it has been prepared for the disbelievers. And here we talk 1,442 years later. Nobody have done it yet. <laughs> but we treat the Quran like this stuff ain't real. And I want everybody to ask themselves... Do I act like this, this is a miracle given to me to help me in my life and save me from the hellfire? I want you to ask yourself that. Or am I just saying that off my tongue? And I'm saying I believe that in my heart. But my limbs don't indic indicate that. Ask ourselves. Inshallah, we're going to stop here. And the next time we're going to cover the different aspects of the miracle, the different Aspects of Allah of the Quran being a miracle. So we're going to actually talk about what make the Quran a miracle. How it is more eloquent than other speech. We're going to get into it. The, the Sheikh Hafizullah, he brings Yeah, I was right. Ten points. Some of them you won't be able to understand because you have to know Arabic, but I'm going to bring it as clear, make it as clear as I can. Just the point of it is to see what you're missing and not trying to learn his language. And try trying to learn the book of Allah. May Allah bless y'all. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.